Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, better. Okay, buongiorno and welcome to the last presentation before the closing keynote. It's been a long conference, I know, but I'm glad that you could find your way here. Uh, and the title of this talk is Maintaining a National Aerial Image Registry with QGIS. And <clears throat> before I go into that topic, I will introduce briefly Gispo, the company that I work for, and myself. So I'm Mikael Vatla. I've been working at Gispo for a bit over five years now at this point. And Gispo itself was founded in 2012 by Pekka Sarkola, and it's a Finnish consulting company. And we currently have, I believe we have 16 employees currently. And our main goals, the main thing that we do, is we help our customers use Phosphor G solutions and open data. And one of the ways we help do this is by training. Uh, we have trained over 100 organizations and over 1,000 people, mostly in Finland, but also internationally. Uh, other things we do include software development, system integrations, support and consulting. Uh, and this uh, presentation is going to be focused mostly on QGIS plugin development. Uh, we are a huge open source advocate and we believe in capacity building with open source. So that's enough about Gispo. So let's jump into the project and the topic at hand. So the National Land Survey of Finland or the NLS, I'm going to call it from now on, he is responsible for organizing aerial imaging missions on a national scale in Finland. And the metadata of these aerial images is maintained in a registry database, which has over one million images uh, since the 1930s. Uh, the current technical implementation of this registry is a bit dated. Uh, it's based on Visual Basic 6, and there is also an Oracle database backend. Uh, some issues with this current system, uh, well, because it's so technically dated, it's uh, difficult maintaining it. It's hard to uh, keep improving it and building upon the current system. Uh, another thing is that the current system is maybe not the most uh, beginner friendly, I would say. Uh, there is a small, small group of experts that maintain the registry. And from what I've heard, they prefer using like raw SQL to edit the database. And I don't know about you, I'm a developer, so I love SQL, but maybe I wouldn't want to give like the, on the first day, someone the full SQL writes to a production database. So maybe a bit friendlier tool is needed here. Uh, solve both of these issues and more. Uh, there is a need for a novel system that is built on a much more modern technology stack and specifically Phosphor G stack. So. To achieve this goal, the NLS has assembled a cross-functional team. And we are currently four software developers, a tester, a scrum master, and a product owner. Unfortunately, the other members of the team couldn't be here in Firenze, but I'm glad I get to talk about this project with you here. And this uh, project really is a part of the National Land Survey's ongoing strategic efforts to embra embrace uh, free open source software. And since 2012, or, sorry, 2020, the NLS has officially adopted a strategy of embracing free open source software where possible and using open source technologies where possible to build the technological environment. And if you want to know more about this strategic effort, then please consult Mr. Janne Kylmaho, who is in the back row there. He's from the NLS, and I'm sure he can tell you a lot more. He also gave a, gave a great speech on Wednesday, so I'm sure that's a recording of that somewhere. So back to the project. Uh, one of the goals is that the project should be production ready by the end of 2022, by the end of this year. Uh, and we, I believe we are on the way to hit that, hopefully. Uh, there are also a couple of other interesting projects at the NLS ongoing at the same time. There is this uh, new topographic data production system, which was also presented today. So this is a huge effort by the NLS to kind of to redo the whole topographic database, the national topographic database, on a FOS 4G stack as well. And there is also uh, one example is a point cloud registry management tool, which I bring up because it has a lot of similarities with this uh, current project that I've been working on as well. It's also a QGIS plugin built for managing a registry that is in post-GIS. 
So here is a quick overview of the system architecture. I will go into more detail on the front end and back end soon. Uh, but you can see that starting from the bottom, there is the Citrix uh, environment where we have QGIS running, or Demos has QGIS running, and our plugin is uh, in there. So basically, uh, users who want to use the plugin connect to Citrix, and they all have the same environment. It's, it takes care of these issues with different environments in that way. Then uh, the back end is Postgres. So currently, it's Postgres 12 and Postgres 3. So the registered data is there. Then we are building integrations to integrate the database into some other systems as well. And there is this exter external model archive, uh, which uh, is for archiving the data. So we are building an integration into that system. And also, the NLS has other, other internal tools which may, may need to read data from this uh, aerial imaging database as well. So we are building an o OGC API integration into the database as well at some point. So other uh, tools can view the data in the database and read it. And the actual images, as I should clarify, are not in the database. So this is just for storing metadata. And the actual images are on network drives mostly. And this, uh, our database only has like information where you can find it and information where it was taken and so on, so metadata. Uh, jumping into more detail into the database or the back end, uh, the first things we did uh, was uh, play around with the data model. The current database is in Oracle, and uh, there was a lot of revising of the old data model going on before we even started because there was a lot of, uh, I believe, redundant data and data that wasn't used that much. So the new data model, it has uh, kind of a cleaner, well, that the image is so small you can't really see it and it doesn't look, look really clean, clean, but it's cleaner compared to the old one, believe me. And one of the big things is that there is now improved spatial capabilities. So uh, in the old Oracle database, there were geometries stored as corner points, so numeric data. And one of the big things we had to do is convert that numeric data, those corner points, into actual polygon, polygon geometries or point geometries. So. Uh, how we did this is we built a process for data mi migration. So basically, create an extract from the current production uh, database to a Postgres dump. So Oracle to Postgres in that way. Then we load the dump to a like, work database where we run some SQL scripts to transform the data from the old uh, schema, the old data model, to the new one. And this is also where the geometry generation happens. And then the end product is a PostGIS dump of the current production data. And we built this uh, in an automatic way, so we can run this automatically as part of our CI pipeline every time we uh, check in code to that repository. So in this way, when uh, the users go and test, test the plugin, they always have the, should have nearly the same situation that they have on production as well. Uh, I should mention also that the new database has an increased emphasis on data validation, and this is done using constraints and triggers in the database side. So there is no more uh, missing data where there should be data. And also, if you update data, then everything that should be updated when you touch that piece of data get, also gets updated with triggers. So that's something that we built into the database as well. For the front end, it's a QGIS plugin. And it's really a collection of custom tools. And there's a listing of everything that we have built and are planning to build. So one of the main things that we have done, uh, the first things that we did is the filter tool, our search tool. There's a bigger image coming soon, if you can see it there. So don't worry. Uh, basically, it's a way for users to search data from the database and easily display it on a map in QGIS. Uh, there is also support for modifying attributes and geometries in the registered database. This is, of course, really easy because it's PostGIS and QGIS, and it just plays together so well. You don't need to do anything. There are also a couple of tools to import new imagery into the registry. Uh, so if new images come in, you can load this uh, specific uh, data that the Im imagers provide together with the image, this metadata, text files, or something and this gets parsed and read in the database. 
there is also plans for exporting data from the registry to create maps automatically, and maybe external archiving is coming soon as well. And of course, many requirements that you think you're going to need when you have this metadata database is in QGIS out of the box. So like I mentioned, the attribute and geometry editing, there's so many tools for those things already in QGIS. It saves us a lot of time. It's like the, one of the biggest like, benefits from my perspective. Uh, the plugin is built uh, using this uh, QGIS plugin tools, uh, like Toolbox. So I will promote that for a bit. It's by Gizpa as well. And it's a great way for um, to get into QGIS plugin development. So if you're into that, then please go check it out. It's on GitHub as well. Uh, really, this uh, Lered plugin is part of a growing QGIS plugin portfolio. So I mentioned already the and point cloud management plugin, but there have been others before that as well, and it's great that the NLS has like trust and belief in the QGIS ecosystem, and it, uh, it's apparent that and this, this is a great way to do these highly specialized tools. So here's that image I promised earlier of the search tool. So uh, it works uh, by users click on that little green plus icon there, and it adds a new row where you can set the table, the field, the operation, and the value that you want to uh, search for. So in the first row, we are searching for production areas with the name Joensu. And those fields get automatically populated. So if you change the table, it will automatically regenerate the field and when you change the field, it will uh, regenerate the value list. So you can, you can see all of the possible values in that uh, drop down on the right. And then if you start typing something, it will auto complete as well. So that's really nice. And that's also a feature provided by QGIS out of the box mostly. Yeah. And we are also working to bring OR support to this search. So these are all AND clauses now. So uh, whatever rows you have here, Everything must be true in order to search to return something. But we are also adding an OR button, so you can add an OR clause to this search as well. Here's the results of the search in the previous slide. So in this case, the search was quite specific. It was Joensuu and after May of 21, I think. So it only returned one, one uh, imaging as a result. There you can see the red box. That's the that's the like a production area or the plant flight area, and then the green boxes are are uh, actual uh, images taken. And the coverage you see there, it's not like it has some gaps. It really doesn't have those, but I just wanted to make it clear that there's like many flight lines. They actually overlap the images, but here it's a bit easier to see that that plane has been flying up and down, up and down. Here's a quick screenshot of the forums that we have. So of course, using forums, I think it's a lot nicer to edit data in this way than go going in with a database management system and typing SQL. So you can see all of the values. You can see all the drop downs of possible values, so on. You don't have to remember what's the ID of some code list value that you need here. It's really, really nice. And also, we have built these forums in a way that you can start from any production area and then go to see what uh, imagings have been done on that production area and then go directly to those images of a spe specific imaging session and then to kind of proceed, proceed what image products have been created from those images and so on and so on. So you can drill down using these forums really well. So uh, to wrap it all up, some main takeaways here. Uh, QGIS is a great platform for building these highly specific customized tools, especially for small groups of users, small groups of experts who are already familiar with QGIS. So maybe for like 100,000 people, I wouldn't suggest a QGIS plugin, but for 10, sure, why not? And uh, also embracing free open source software, it's a great way for the public sector to take ownership of the software projects and really avoid any vendor locking, avoid any 
any potential issues with not getting the uh, fixes or the features that they want. That's one of the key things here. They can also build their own in-house knowledge of the software. So when us as the consultants, when we leave, uh, they still have people who have been working on the project the whole time who are intimately familiar with the software, who can maintain it. And also, it's a great way for the public sector to provide value to citizens and businesses as well, because when you contribute to open source, everyone reaps the benefits. And also, the public sector can help each other in this way. Yeah, but that's it for me. Uh, you can contact us at Gispo, so info at gispo.fi, .fi, I mean, <laughs> and Mikael at gispo.fi. And we have offices in Finland as well, and so Helsinki and Turku. You can talk to Sanna, or our CEO, and the Pekka in there as well. And also Jani, who knows a lot about the strategy, and other friendly guys at the NLS. Thank you.